Well, the main building is 17th century. Yeah. And this barn here is Victorian, I think. And this yeah. one's Victorian as well. And what comes with the place? What have you got? Eight acre paddock there, a bit of woodland up there. No and horses. And the cottage there. Right, well, let's head to the herb garden. All right. With no herbs in it. No. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you find this place, Mike? Was it with a great difficulty? Yeah, it was a couple of years of searching. Mm -hmm. My brother did a lot of the searching because I was working on Omadorn. Yeah. Bit of fresh air. Mike, how long have you been in this house? Well, I moved in about two and a half years ago. Mm. And since then, I've been building, converting it. What have you done to it? The main house was quite a few small rooms like it was split up into main house and servants quarters mm -hmm. and I've made the bottom half into just two big living areas one small music room with a grand piano in it and the stable block converted into a recording studio I mean, well, how much did you have to spend on the on converting into on converting the house mm. and the studio mm. 60 60 thousand well, that's over two years. I mean, you would think that that's the sort of investment you'd want to keep. You're prepared to get rid of it all. Mm. Well, I have no choice, really. How closely have you looked into this whole business of these tanker aircraft? Do you think that perhaps you're, you're going off at a tangent too quickly? I don't think so, no. Everything I've heard seems to support the idea that it's going to really spoil the area. Mm. And it's a great shame because I think it's a very beautiful part of England. But of course, you do live in an area which is n known for its aircraft. I mean, you've got RAF Campbell over here with the, the Red Arrows. Oh, that's you've had no... the Concords mm. flying in and out, so it isn't new, is it? Oh, it is new, yes. A regular thing like this. Concord would, would come over here once every couple of days, and it was really lovely to see it. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And the Red Arrows, it, it, you know, <laughs> they helped me want to move here to really? be able to watch them, yes. And they're not, they're not noisy at all. What sort of height would these tanker aircraft be at? Apparently about 3,000 feet. And you, you've been told they're the noisiest aircraft? Yes, noisier than Concorde. Have you thought about living with the aircraft? I mean, I know you want it to, to go, but what, what would be the actual uh, disruption to you? Would it affect... Do you uh, have a load of musicians recording together mm. in one room? There's only really one one point where the music is really working and uh, you, you create an atmosphere in that room and it's very easy to destroy and all you need is one plane to go over and you, you won't get that again that day you may not get it again for two days you know you just don't go in there and start recording and it all comes out right it comes an aircraft <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that's, that's, that's fine and it can easily put up with that I wouldn't disturb anybody, but this is going to be a, like thunder and lightning coming straight over the top. Mm. And it's going to spoil the atmosphere of the place, which is a very beautiful atmosphere. What would it cost to, to uh, get the noise out? I mean, to keep the noise out of the studio, I'd have to completely lead line it. I mean, it's 30 foot high ceiling. Lead line the whole thing. I don't think the structure of the building would take it for a start. And it would spoil the whole idea of the place, which is to have be able to have the windows open, you know, and hear the birds singing and fresh air and, you know, just, you know, I may as well move into London if I'm going to do that. So, Mike, really, peace and solitude is what you came here for. Is that, mm. is that reflecting the sort of person that you are? Do you like being in your own all the time? Used to be, yes. Well, I've completely changed now. Yes, the, the image has changed too, the, the beard and the long hair, that's mm. all gone. Mm. Is this because you're deciding to come out or what? Yes, <laughs> yes. Really, that's the way you'd put it. What, what about the music itself? How does it happen? Because you don't produce very many albums, uh, um, you know. Well, recently yes, I spent the first year building the studio and working on ideas. And um, this album has been very hard to do something to satisfy myself. So this is the thrown new... and thrown out hours of material, and eventually ending up with something that is an advance on all the others, rather than just just sort of part two of the other records. It's something different. It's more complex music, and there's more people in it. There's a string section most of the way through, and there's lots of soloists. So you're not doing the lot. 
No, no. And that also makes it performable live. I'm very seriously thinking of doing live concerts now. So when will this new Oldfield album be out? Before Christmas. And before you leave this place? Mm -hmm. Double album. That's your last piece of work here, is it? If they move the tankers in, yes. At the moment, you're very much involved with the Action Committee. Yes, so they asked me to make a single to help pay for their posters and their expensives, so I've done that. That should be released soon. <laughs>